what's up everybody it's your boy slim aka mr different back with another video today is part three of the ableton live basics video so basically what this is is going to be talking about midi and audio so i'm just gonna go over how to use midi and audio and how to really work with the stuff and please don't text me and show you how to use midi and audio and how to you know manipulate a little bit some simple techniques with it like i say because these are just basic tutorials they're not super advanced and i just want to go like i say this might be the last one or i might do one more depending on that i don't know because i really want to get into making the beats with this with ableton live to really show you guys how to make beats with it because that's what i know a lot of you guys are waiting for so i'm gonna show you this probably this might be the last one i don't know we'll see but anyway let's get to it. i'm gonna show you how to you know work with midi and audio because really once you learn that the rest is you know self-explanatory almost except like automation like that which i'll go over that in another video so first we're gonna switch over to the sequencer menu so boom by hitting the tab button or clicking the buttons up there y'all should know it from the last video and already i have a midi audio track now think about um ableton is if you want to work with midi you have to have a midi audio track selected and if you want to have work with audio like recording audio you have the audio track in order to pick which one you want to add you just right click in the open spot and you can either insert midi or insert audio you can also do a return track if you want to do return effects which is really nice to have in most situations you know what returns are then i really suggest you read a phone i might make a video about how to do return effects because they really are helpful so first gonna work with some midi so when you got the midi track up here now you can add your plugins or whatever you want to like that so i'm just going to add in a plugin so you can see so i'm just going to go to my plugin and we're just going to pick the analog lab 2 make sure my midi track is selected and i'm just going to drag analog to either onto the midi track or down here doesn't really matter whichever one you know works for you all right and there's analog lab and as you see since my midi's already set up we have noise now up here your controls you can either minimize it or make it bigger you can turn it on and off you so mute unmute well this is unmuted this is muted you can solo it you can aim it for recording you can change the panning left or right by clicking that and going up and down so change your panning you can change the overall volume which is basically messing with the faders right there as you see so you can either turn the faders down right here or you can turn it right there just depending on you it's a unity game right now so that's good you have your instrument, so whatever in whatever input it is. So I got my Q25 because that is my MIDI controller. So you got different MIDI controllers. Your channels, your MIDI channels. You have your input monitoring. So if you want to, that's basically like listening back. So if you know if you're recording, I talk, talk about when I start recording. So, but you can uh, turn your input monitoring off, auto or on, just depending on what you want. And then you have what channel is going to. So it's going to my master channel, which will be over here my master channel my master bus so now we can record some midi so let's just pick a sound let's pick a pad sound so we'll go to pads and then we'll go to uh bright and just pick a random one i guess that worked that worked all right so record it so we'll just hit record So now we got that, we'll just bring it back and then we'll use the highlight tool to select our loop. So if we turn on our loop function, now we have a loop. And we have audio. Now, what if you want to, you know, mess around with this audio and, you know, start affecting it? Well, you just double click, it brings up your piano roll, which you guys should be, you know, kind of familiar with most piano rolls. It show you your notes on your side. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go bring the kids inside. But anyway, so back to the piano roll. Y'all know what the basic piano roll is. It shows you your notes on one side, show you the length of your track, show you the notes you got input in there. You know, basic piano roll is stuff that you guys should know about that. Over here, you have your options with your MIDI, uh, your piano roll. So for when you got your listen notes, that's pretty, just leave that on. But anyway, show you your clip, show you what clip it is, you know, the time signature, that kind of stuff. Show you what notes are in there so you can see what notes are actually highlights. So I think so it's between C sharp three and three A. So you kinda had it kinda give you like what is in between. You can legato it, so you know that will pretty much take everything and link them together. You got uh duplicate the region, so you can duplicate the loop or the loop button right here, which I like. 
So when you have your selection like this, so however long you want the loop, so say you want just this part to loop, you just click loop, and now when you drag, it loops it. So that's a good feature right there, which I really like. So you kind of get your points pretty nice, and you guys will change the points by doing dragging right here, but you know, I just do it up here because it's a whole lot easier. Um, if you need to like quantize, all you gotta do is highlight everything. You can right click, and there you go. You got your quantize settings, or you can just straight quantize it. So boom, everything's quantized. So now you guys can have your, you know, robotic sounding <laughs> beats or whatever, you know. Uh, if you need to change the actual grid size, you just right click down here where it says 1 16th, and you can change the different grid. So you can change it to an eight bar, four bar, two bar, one, one and a half, so forth, and even has a triplet grid. If you need, you know, do your triplet notes, you know, your t -t 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 with your hi-hats and all that. So there's that, which that is pretty unique right there. And you can also show your velocities, which is down here below so you can see the velocities and you can change the velocity and all that good mess right there and then if you also can fold this down which is if you do this now it just shows you the like the notes you're actually using so that's pretty unique if you're trying to figure out you know what notes you need to play you actually make you like a little helper tool which i'll show you in a later video fold it down and now you have this helper guide that show you exactly what notes to play which like i said i will show you that in a future video on how do you know do that so you guys can you know help you guys out um okay so let's get out the effect window real quick go back up here do 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 and i say you can click between these a chain between you know the effects window and the piano roll down here so that's pretty unique right there um now with midi effects they have actually a midi effects tab so if you go to midi effects you have midi effects like arpeggiator chords um effects racks velocity scale pitch random stuff like that so if i take this um arpeggiator and i just go like this 16 arpeggiator put it before that now it's gonna play this as an arp which is pretty cool you know you can you got different effects that do different things and that's just one thing but you're gonna do that with the midi so it goes behind the midi so basically it's trick that it's triggering its own midi and it's following the pattern and just so forth, like effects, you can actually go to your plugins or audio effects. You can add in different audio effects like reverb and distortion. Where's distortion at? Distortion and vocoder. You can just, you know, go ham with it and just do all kind of stuff. And your basic effects racks type of stuff. So easy. That's easy right there. So at that point, you should kind of understand you know what me does and how you can kind of affect it and that's pretty much it with that also there's automation stuff like i said but i'll get that into another video because that's a video in itself and i'm not trying to spend too much time with this video just give me the basics so now we're going to look at actually audio and how you record audio so we'll go to the audio track we'll just turn my loop off because i don't need a loop right now so now in my audio effects um basically the same thing as the midi you know you got all the same functions right here you can choose what source you have. So mine is input one, which I got to turn on in a second. So I have to configure it. So let's go ahead and do that. Configure hardware settings. Up. Do, 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 do. Boom. There we go. Then I'll link my microphone up. Now I should have audio coming in. Now my monitoring set off. Now what that means is um, monitoring, input monitoring basically allows you to hear yourself as you record, which a lot of people prefer, a lot of artists prefer that. I prefer it sometimes, especially when you're recording with auto tune. I will leave it on. But we put the auto, you'll hear it, you're gonna hear a chorus effect once I turn it on. So auto, now you can hear actually you can't hear, so let's put it on on. Now you should be able to hear a coursing effect. Basically that means you're hearing the input monitoring of the source. So um you're hearing me in real time plus you're hearing a slight delay. So that's why I get this kind of cool coursing effect. But, you know, the lower your buffer size and all that, the, the less of the um, delay you'll hear. So let's turn it off because it's kind of annoying to me and I'm trying to focus. So, yeah, as you can see, that's for if you know you're recording yourself. Now, let's just record some real quick and I'll show you how you can affect the audio a little bit. So same thing, figure out where you need to go, hit record. Yo, what's up, everybody? Oh, forgot, you got to make sure you arm the track. <laughs> let's do it again. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video today. Teach you guys the basics of recording in Ableton Live. Simple. 
hit stop. Now, if we play it back. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video today. Teach you guys the basics of recording in Ableton Live. And now, just like any other thing, you go to audio effects and you can start adding effects into it. And just click on your audio effects. See if I want to throw some reverb on, if you know you guys love reverb. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another. I can throw on some multi band compressor. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video today. Teach you guys the basics of recording in. Yeah, that's the OTT compressor right there. You know what OTT is. That's what the OTT is based off of. Um, you got EQ. So go to EQ8. And we'll just turn this to a. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back. With another video today, you got the basics of recording in, you know, it just gets at that point, you know, it's just kind of playing around and experimenting. Um, one thing I did skip is how do you work with audio as far as making beats? Um, because now you guys probably don't record, but say you want to, I know a lot of people like to use um MIDI as their drums and all that. It's very simple. So all you need to do is open up a like a <laughs> MIDI channel. I can't think of the name of for a second. And then you want to go to instruments and you go to sampler. Put it on your MIDI channel, and then you want to go to whatever your sample is, which will be in my case. I'm going to this right here. Go to kick and pick a uh, kick. Damn it, pick a kick sample, and then we just drag it in here. And now I can trigger it with MIDI. So if you guys want to add in your percussive instruments, like you know, drums, snares, hi hats, and all that, all you can do is throw it into a sampler, and you can do it. Just like any uh, normal thing. So now if I arm it and then record. You know. And then, like you said, go in here. Bring it up. Highlight it. Quantize. Or control U. And. So. Simple, just like just like FL Studio right there. You know, it's very simple, very easy. And that's how I usually work with mine anyway because it makes it a whole lot easier to, you know, makes it a whole lot easier to actually work with and do stuff with. Um, so I know that's one thing that's probably going to be a question brought up. I just want to make sure I got that out the way and never forget it. Um, anything else I'm missing? Let's see, audio. That's pretty much it. Like I said, I like the way this records audio. Like I said, I'm just not a big fan of Edison and, and FL Studio. I just cannot stand Edison and having to record Edison. I think that's just the worst decision they ever made. They ever made in their life, but whatever. It's, it's, they're not going to fix it. So I like the traditional way of recording like that. That's just my personal preference. That's why I'm, I'm choosing. If I'm lean, that's why I'm, you know, working at Ableton Live now just because of that function right there. So, yeah, that's pretty much it right there. That's pretty much the base of how to, you know, record some audio, record some um, record some MIDI, and kind of, you know, the base of, you know, editing and all that and stuff. Like I said, there will be more advanced tutorials coming real soon. Like I said, I want to keep it basic as possible to start off and then build our way up over time. This year is going to be a great year for FL Studio, Ableton, and any other DAW that I decide to do on this channel because – that's how I am, and I don't care what people think. <laughs> so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy and like that. Like always, if you guys like that, please thumb up. Give, like, give, please give a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you guys want to see, what type of beats you want to see in this uh, DAW, and I'll be happy to do that. Also support my channel and support my product. You know, help me out. It does mean a lot. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Like always, and guess what, everybody? I will see you guys next video because y'all know who it is. Your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different, not motivated by the money. But, like, but the like, comment, subscribe, and views. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Oh.